So about a week ago, we made a video talking about a former 2017 first round pick who had gotten waived and gotten claimed. In the video, I pretty much said that the Nashville Predators were making a mistake in waiving this guy and not giving him an actual opportunity to succeed at the NHL level, utilizing the tools that he has, like his shot, and instead playing him in grinder-like roles, playing him too much on the left side, the strong side that he has, and not really developing him properly. The video a few weeks ago went over how he got claimed by the Seattle Kraken, and today we are talking about how, I don't want to say I told you so, but I think I gotta say I told you so. Sorry, Nashville. Let's take a look at 2017 first-round pick Ellie Tolvanen. Because when it comes to the way he's performed so far as a member of the Kraken, the Kraken have kind of gone out there and done everything that we thought the Nashville Predators should have been doing, but haven't been. And as a result, the numbers are remarkable. We went over all of this in the prior video, but we'll do it again just for your viewing pleasure. Ellie Tolvanen is 23 years old, drafted in the 30th overall spot in the first round of the 2017 draft. A right wing left wing player who plays probably his best on the right side as a left handed shot. Ellie Tolvanen was initially a guy supposed to go a lot earlier in the eyes of many people looking at the draft stage and its prospects. He was ranked to go 17th by ISS, 11th by Future Considerations, McKean's had him at 22, McKenzie at 17, and he was the 8th ranked skater for all North American skaters by NHL Central Scouting. Now, despite all of these rankings, he slipped all the way to 30th overall, which was seen by many people, myself included, as an absolute steal of a draft pick for Nashville. Unfortunately, though, he really did not prosper in the Predators system overall, as the few years that he had spent in the AHL and the NHL were mostly just filled with AHL success. Eventually, he became a full-time National Hockey League player in 2020-2021, getting 22 points in 40 games played. He then followed that up with another 23-point year in 75 games this time, and realistically, I mean, the guy was getting older, his point production wasn't improving, and in fact, it was actually getting worse. Tolvanen had great numbers playing with the Sioux City Musketeers in the USHL, plus the Jokerit in the KHL, not to mention the fact that his AHL numbers were actually pretty good too. But at the NHL level, the Nashville Predators and John Hines, they just couldn't get it together when it came to producing a player that could actually play like a top six producer probably should be able to. This was a guy that if you ask people back in 2017 what they thought he'd be able to become, there were many that believed that Tolvanen could become a consistent 25 to 30 goal scorer year in, year out, maybe have 65-ish points per season if he pans out to his potential. This was because he was a volume shooter from the outside that really made his bread and butter by just firing pucks on goal in and around the face-off circles. Sure, he wasn't the fastest guy out there, he wasn't the most defensively responsible, but when it came to just firing Firing pucks towards the net, the guy was really good at doing that. One of the best just regular shots on any of these prospects we had seen in the 2017 draft. The Predators, unfortunately, did not really get the best out of Tolvanen and that shot, especially since he only got 11 goals last year, and this season with 4 points and 13 games played, Eventually, you saw yourselves the Preds send him down on waivers, thinking that he would clear. He got claimed by Seattle, and now in his first six games as a member of the Kraken, the guy has five points. And in fact... It's kind of funny because the goals that he is scoring for Seattle, they're all similar types of goals. They're goals where he is on his weak side, so he's a left-handed shot, so he's on the right wing, and he's either absolutely firing it on goal as a 1T, or he's just coming down the wing and sniping it with his on-the-rush wrist shot. These are the types of goals that we had come to expect out of Tolvanen because he's such a good shooter from the perimeter. Sure, it's not a sustainable type of package to be able to say, okay, just go out there and do the OV thing from the right side instead of the left, but Tolvanen is one of the few players in the NHL who was capable of doing just that. And in fact, we had ourselves an interview done with David Poyle, Predators GM, on 102.5 The Game. This is an article on thescore.com talking about the comments that he made. Also linked in the description is going to be the actual video itself on the 102.5 podcast. But heading over back onto the score article, what the article does is it transcribes the comments made from Poyle and how the Tolvanen experiment worked. Did we give him enough opportunities? Should we have played him higher? Time will tell. Seattle's a team that plays a little bit differently than us. They really rotate almost their four lines equally. 
and offensively, they put him in a position higher than we have. This could be a mistake on our part. That's on me if he turns out to be really successful, but we thought we tried him in a lot of different areas and different places. Now, it's kind of funny, because this comment kind of insinuates the idea that the Predators tried him out, and they really just didn't find a fit. They put him in different spots, and unfortunately, he was not able to replicate the level of success he's having with Seattle early on any time with the Predator system. And this is sort of where things get a little bit interesting, because the Predators, I mean, they played Tolvanen mostly in a grinder esque type of role in the bottom six, third line, fourth line, etc. Now we know the Seattle Kraken have Tolvanen in what is essentially their third line at the moment, but the difference is they're actually giving him opportunities to play offensively, and they're playing him on the power play. They're giving him these chances to utilize his shot and put him in a position to succeed. Poyle going out there and saying to this radio show that, hey, this might be a mistake if he turns out to be really good and we waved him. That's kind of wild. Like, high key, that's something that I don't think an NHL GM should be able to admit, let's say like a few weeks after the guy was claimed off of waivers. This article goes out there and talks about how the Finn is suiting up for about 12.32 of time on ice per contest in Seattle, comparable to his average playing time in Nashville this season. However, Tolvanen failed to crack the 11 minute mark in five of his last six games as a Predator. Poyle said he didn't want to lose Tolvanen and that the organization hoped he would spend time with the AHL's Milwaukee Admirals. We had to make some decisions. We're not going anywhere. He's doing well, good for him, and we've been doing better. Not necessarily because of him, but because we've made a decision to go another direction with different types of players. And one of the more interesting things that I think you're able to do is go over onto the Nashville Predator subreddit and read what Preds fans are saying when it comes to the Poyle comments about Tolvanen and waving him being a mistake. If you look at a lot of the conversations that Preds fans are having, it's all sort of the same thing, that hey, the Preds can't really develop forward prospects, it's John Hines and his system, it's the idea that this team is so good at getting goaltenders and defenders, but they just can't find that forward prospect to stick around and actually develop properly. You talk about the Kevin Fialas of the world, you talk about, of course, now the Tolvanens, this is a pattern that has sort of been going on for a while, and it's unfortunate to see, because a guy like Ellie Tolvanen is a pretty good goal-scoring shooter that probably could have been useful by any NHL team. In fact, this is a tweet from NHL Watcher going over what Friedman said on the Jeff Merrick show the other day. I think the most amazing thing about Tolvanen is that 22 teams passed on him. And I feel like for my team, for example, the Vancouver Canucks, a guy like Tolvanen who could absolutely rip it from the face-off circle, that's the kind of guy that I think if the Canucks added, they could really expand on that type of profile long-term. He's only 23 years old after all. Rutherford was talking all about how they need to get young players, but unfortunately they passed up on the free one that was available on their doorstep. It's interesting because a lot of teams seem to think that they already have somebody like Tolvanen, therefore they don't need him. That's actually the first reply to this NHL Watcher Twitter thread from Justin Pogg, but I did think it was interesting to bring it up because, I mean, he's doing so well with Seattle, like, how did you not see this coming? At least props to Seattle for using him properly and giving him an actual role to succeed. If you do five points in six games, multiply it out by 82, sure, it's a very small sample size, but that's on pace for 69 points. And that's a very nice number, if I do say so myself. So, talk to the comments about your thoughts, the idea of Ellie Tolvanen being a mistake for Nashville, how it was a mistake to wave him, how it was a mistake to even think that he would clear, and how the Seattle Kraken are looking like geniuses right now because they picked him up, they put him in a proper spot, and now he's showing off numbers as a result. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the development of Tolvanen so far. I personally am very happy to see it. We've made videos about this guy the past few years talking about how he was really good, and in the KHL he was a top scorer, and how he was disappointing at higher levels of play, but now we're talking about how good he is. And that makes me happy. So talk to the concert thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.